So we can go ahead and uh, yeah. kick things off. First off. And um, as many of you know by now, um, our CEO has recently um, passed, and um, it's been a difficult time for us all. And um, if you would like, you can go ahead and um, read Patch's statement uh, regarding Abby here. If anybody wanted to uh, take a moment and talk about any experiences or interactions you had with Abby, that'd be that'd be good. I know we we all had our our moment to talk about it, and um, I think he left the company in an uh, excellent place. He's left us in an excellent place, and um, we're gonna we're gonna honor his effort and make Second Life the best it can possibly be. And for myself, even um, I'm a moon, lab, moon labber. I'm not in the office. Uh, of course, none of us have been for the last year or so. Um, but I did have the pleasure of uh, of meeting Abby um, on several occasions uh, in First Life uh, at the Battery office. And um, I was really struck by his kindness and his passion, his ability to really kind of listen. Um, you know, you had that feeling that he was actually hearing you rather than... Um, you know, just get out of my way kind of stuff. So um, I'm really going to miss him for that. Um, I thought he was really a wonderful, wonderful guy. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything or say anything else. He was, you wouldn't be able to tell, if you didn't know he was a CEO or a leader of a company, you would have been able to tell that he, he he's a guy that you would want to follow. Uh, he would inspire you. Um, that was just the person he was on the inside, and, um, and it's no surprise that uh, his character and intelligence. And I, I met him a few times at the battery office. I I never got to work with him on a personal level as far as work goes, but um, I can tell you from all of our company meetings, and you know, as you can relate over the years, um, when he was here, he he got the engine going again, you know, and. Um, yeah, it was just, it came naturally for him. Uh, nothing felt manufactured. Um, you know, even if we took a couple turns that we didn't want to take or we're like, let's backtrack a little, um, you still believed in him because he believed in all of us. Absolutely. And Ebe had a way of being true in an unfiltered manner, but never... You could never misconstrue or take poorly what he was saying, even though you can tell he wasn't filtering it through some corporate speech or anything like that. He was direct in a, I'm dealing with you, um, but not direct in like a downward direction. I, I literally think that he viewed everybody, no matter what their role was, uh, as an equal and he was interested in what they had to say and it wouldn't be engaged when dealing with that individual. Um, on my personal side, I had some very, very bad medical things going on in my family and he was so interested and, you know, would query me occasionally on how things were be updating and, uh, you know, making sure I was okay. And I mean, we only dealt in person twice in the time that he was here, but he had a profound impact on me. He was Torque. Um, he did take a, a leave of absence uh, towards the end to focus on his health. Um, so we didn't hear from him for, I think it was a few months, but he would pop in when he could. Um, you know, his his health was ailing you know, up and down um, for maybe a, what, a year, year and a half. Um, but when he was here, you know, I'm sure he made the best of it. And there was a lot that he was working on, uh, even throughout that time, uh, things that simply required his attention. Yeah, and there was an analogy I actually wanted to, to share. Um, it's something that um, was actually passed down to me from a uh, previous uh, support job in which uh, our department was 
uh, Remedy running a little poorly and we're all frustrated. So they brought in someone who actually reinvigorates uh, corporations from the ground up. He basically works with all levels of, of teams. And um, he gave us an analogy where uh, you can imagine there's a ball in the center. It could be an issue. It could be something you're working on, a project. On one side is the customer and the other side is you, you know, the, the support rep. And as long as the ball is in the center, you're always working over the issue or project to the customer. Um, a good maneuvering tactic is to slide yourself to their side and you're both looking at the issue at the same level. And that kind of eliminates the me versus him um, kind of mantra. You're now working hand in hand to whatever it is. And um, with Abby, that's the feeling that I got on a personal level. We were working side by side. Yeah, and he's a CEO and there's numerous other levels of management between us, but when he was talking, or at least he was you know, discussing things moving forward. It was, I'm working with you, and we're going to reach this goal. And um, that was an inspiring facet for me. That's what I took most from him. Yeah, that's definitely my experience as well. Um, I actually initially met him prior to becoming uh, a member of uh, Linden, uh, actually a couple of years before, uh, working on something else. Uh, and uh, found him even then um, just to be this really, I mean, authentic, uh, well-spoken person. Uh, very impressed by him. I want to also note uh, there are two um, in-world memorials uh, out there right now for Ebby. Uh, one is at the Tapestry of Time at SL18B, uh, which will be up for the event. And then also in the Alterberg region within Belisaria, um, we've got a very large statue and memorial to him there. Uh, feel free to check either of those out. Um, I don't need to type this, but that's the name of the region where the memorial's in, uh, in the Lindholm regions. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the candles they did for that, the, the moles put together, that you can light and they melt down and you can refresh them and all of that. It's very cool. You have to send us a picture of that, Adam, <laughs> if you're outside the battery office. That'd be awesome. Watch out for the seagulls. Well, you know, we don't actually have seagulls there, Vix. Um, that's actually inside the bay. We have bagels. <laughs> bagels. <laughs> so what happens at the battery office now? Is it largely deserted? Yeah, we actually haven't been in our offices for, um, well, over a year now. Uh, we do have uh, staff you know, upper staff who will come in every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's we're not in there per se. Not, not on a day to day basis. Do you think you'll ever go back there, or is this a, a new way of working now? Well, I think Patch talked a little bit about that in his uh, Meet the Lindens yesterday. Um, to paraphrase him as best as I can, um, Eventually, um, there may be some people back into the office, um, but it's not like near, near future. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we hope to have some of that. But the lab's always been a company, I mean, since its founding, that's been very big on what's called moon labbing, uh, where you're working at home, you know, and have your own home office. I know that I've always been in a home office uh, with the lab. And a lot of us are, and will continue to be, uh, maybe even more so in the future. And yet, as a global company, you don't employ outside of the USA. Why is that? Uh, we wouldn't I, be able to. That's more of yeah. a, I don't know if we have a user group that can address that particular question. Fortunately, we couldn't because it's out of our realm. 
that might actually be one to take to uh, some of the Meet the Linden uh, events at SLA can be yeah, with some of the upper folks. Catch them unawares. See that enough already then, huh? But that's why we like you. I wanted to move on to uh, SL18B. Has anyone enjoyed the festivity so far? Right now it's open through the 6th of July, and this year's theme is Hidden Worlds. Uh, for one, the community celebration is going with over 200 created exhibits, uh, live and DJ music events, and plenty more on the birthday regions. I want to first share a link for the exhibits so you can find here. And a schedule of the performances. We've also brought back the Shop and Hop, which has expanded to 16 regions now and features over 320 merchants. Good Lord, that's a lot of merchants. <laughs> There's also free oh, gifts as usual. I remember when it was one region. Yeah, it keeps growing every year. And a list of every merchant has been put together with the region they're at right here. And you'll also find several Meet the Linden events at SL18B and other speeches by members of Linden Lab and other notable features for a complete list of those, plus archived videos of the ones that have already taken place. You can go ahead and follow this blog. So a lot going on. I'm going to dovetail off that, uh, Vix, because okay. uh, one other thing at uh, SL18B um, is the unveiling of our next Linden Home theme. Uh, this time it's going to be Fantasy Linden Homes, uh, borrowing a bit from the SL18B theme um, to provide some places that, uh, you know, are a little bit different from what we've already offered before. Um, it's uh, worth noting that the homes um, actually do change their look and feel um, a bit throughout the seasons and even a bit uh, throughout the day. Um, some of the lighting and glow effects will change daily and then there's also other changes that will happen each season on those Linden homes. Um, they'll be kind of on their separate, own separate little area of Belisaria. Um, and we don't have an ETA for those, unfortunately. I don't know when they'll release those. Um, I know they're being looked over now and finalized. Um, those will probably be showing up pretty soon. Um, there's also uh, a couple more themes they're working on uh, that are in various stages of completion. Um, and uh, even with those, we're still putting out uh, uh, fairly regularly some of the other styles we've already released. Um, I did see some chalets uh, a couple of days ago that are in production, um, and all the others are coming out now and then. Um, if you are interested in Linden Homes uh, and you don't already have one, uh, as always, you can get them from our website at That's Laurel. Does anyone have any questions about any of that or, or anything else, really? But uh, feel free to shout them out. Go for it.
can answer a bit on that. Uh, there's no plans um, to do anything with them, um, at least within this year. Um, you know, who's to know down the line? We're not sure. But um, at least for now, um, all of the original uh, Nascara uh, continent linden homes uh, will remain. Um, without any downsizing or changes uh, at this point. Uh, I used to say of, in the future. Go ahead, Izzy. Oh, sorry. I can kind of yeah, chime more. in. Just, I'm mostly just uh, reiterating what you said. Uh, currently, there aren't any plans just to, you know, uh, put everybody at ease if you have one of the older Linden homes. Uh, we don't currently have any plans. It's always being looked at, but since there's still decently sporadic uh, presence in the old Linden homes, we haven't made any kind of decision on uh, if we need to do something about them as a And yeah, I think you had the key word there, Izzy, it's if not when, you know. Yeah, because the thing is, is it's also a part of our history. Um, I can't, of course, make any guarantees, but I don't see them going away. I could see them being consolidated, perhaps, at some point, you know, for regions that don't have any or anything like that. We might, you know, remove some uh, to make it a smaller, less ghost towny kind of a, uh, area. But I know that there are some people that still love their original Linden home, so we wouldn't want to hurt that. Yeah, we definitely not want to lose anything like that, Eric. I mean, we, we tend to be very cautious about um, doing anything that harms legacy content. You know, whether, you know, that we can still, it seems right with uh, it being SL18B, you know, you can still res things out of your inventory that were created um, during our beta in 2002. And for the most part, most things will work just like they always have. Um, there's very little that doesn't work like it once did. Um, and the same goes to the places that, are, that exist, you know. Aside from Mescara, you can still go to all of the old welcome areas or all of this sort of thing. Um, you know, we don't tend to depreciate stuff uh, without a lot of forethought, without a lot of reasons. I'd say so, Panther, but again, you know, certainly nothing this year, no change whatsoever. And, you know, who knows down the line, but anything that's going to be done is going to be taken very carefully. question is on the high performance regions would a slow region that's connected pull the performance down with it no by state you mean like um, a collection of regions that are all sharing physical boundaries right yeah, yeah, high, I've, like yeah I've, I've got six, but if, if one of my regions performs badly, it pulls a whole lot down with it. So I'm thinking, supposing I had one of these event regions connected to five other standard ones, would it all run at the same speed as the standard ones, or would the high performance ones still perform well? Well, I would say, how is the um, the regions being used? You say the the high performing or the event one is that one like a popular destination when there's a lot of foot traffic going in and out? And is that foot traffic kind of spilling over into the surrounding regions? Yeah, yeah, we handle about three and a half thousand TPs a day, um, so obviously we get a, a degraded performance when people come and go. 
but our main region is obviously the one that suffers the lag. But if one of our homesteads, let's say, is having problems with someone who's got something they shouldn't have, it will pull the entire estate down with it. And there's no point restarting one region. You have to restart the entire set. Torek, if I remember correctly, you're in kind of a special situation. Um, I believe all of your regions are on a not typical host setup. But correct, yeah. So if they're on the same hosts, then if one is over it being overtaxed it can affect uh, other regions on that same host which is why we typically decentralize um so there's kind of a plus on one side minus on another side about having yours kind of uh together if yours are actually having an issue then it's going to but typically that only happens when a region is using is overusing its resources so i would more look at it from a resource management point than a host management point um but when you're having the specific issues definitely let uh the concierge team know so we can look and see what is actually causing the problem well, to be clear, on the special setup, there is no no problem whatsoever. But obviously, eventually, you're going to offer an, an event system um, or an or event. I, I need to know whether I need to upgrade all six of my regions or whether I can just upgrade the ones that have the most footfall. Unfortunately, um, in the scenario, the way you're describing it, I would say probably the ones with the most footfall. But without knowing how we're going to be creating a new setup, I really can't advise just yet. Which is fair enough, we'll find out together. <laughs> Sounds good. So, literally in the past week, I've observed well over 80 unmanned what appeared to be automated bots roaming my region um, banned every single one they all have similar profile types bunches and bunches of garbage in them they all end up popping in at random locations well they did before I set up a, a telehub um, they're invasive. They just start wandering the sim. Some of them do the clockwork thing where they kind of spin around in a circle and then disappear. They're not related to the grid survey because I checked that out. And some of them are as much as 14, old, 14 years old, which kind of infers that the operators of them are just as old. Uh, some of them are quite new and they have names like AAAAA Allison and then AAAAA Allison and so forth. Um, it looks like it's a developing trend again with these things. Is the lab ever going to introduce some kind of a tool that is definitive where we can identify something that's coming in on a non-standard client so that we can eliminate them? Oh, plenty of them are in nude beach groups or sex groups or your or group torque in some cases. That might be a question better answered by our open development user group. Um, go ahead and post it here. When you were talking, I was thinking who would accurately at least care yeah, for a tool or such. That. Yeah. Um, if you're not able to make the open development group, um, I can go ahead and start um, posting information on a feature request. It's part of our JIRA system in which you can uh, summarize, you know, what you would like to see out of this new tool, um, which it does sound really good, by the way. Um, we don't have one yet, and um, fortunately, we'd be the wrong team to kind of uh, discuss it. Uh, but there would be like, basically two avenues I can at least direct you to, the open development user group and uh, feature request here if you just want to uh, summarize it and send it over. OK, yeah, because I mean, like on a web browser, if I run a web page, 
I can see based on the header information coming into web page requests, this guy's using Chrome, this guy's using Edge, this guy's using Mozilla, or a variant thereof. It would be kind of nice if there was a database call or some such where we could say, oh, they're on Firestorm 6.431, and this guy isn't. And make it a signed header so that the actual developers of these groups have, you know, like a, a secure header flag that they're using that somebody can't easily imitate. Because that way, if they're coming in on a rogue client, which is typically what these bot systems run, um, you know, they recompile their own open source to make their bot clients, we could then at least say, oh, they're on an unsigned client. Goodbye. Following up on your question, do the ones that you kicked out, do they have our tag as, as active? In some cases, yes. Ah, uh, you see, now we had a load that came in from Sexy Nude Beach, and more and more and more came in. So on landing on our land, they would have been off of the group. So I'm assuming they accept everything. That's interesting, yeah, because I, I now remember we had about... 12, 14 of them, didn't we, Elise? And we kept throwing them out and they kept coming back and more and more came in. So, yeah, there's definitely something going on. Yeah, and I've been talking to other estate owners. They're seeing the same things. And in some cases, the same exact bots, seconds. Uh, one of my friends who runs Love Cats, uh, Cat, is going to help me test out a, a new gizmo I'm making that'll help eliminate the problem because one thing I have noticed consistently these stupid things pop in and they're there for less than 30 seconds they don't have any payment info and they've never used any payment info and there's nothing of note in their profile other than open groups that are free so I'm kind of working on a scripted gizmo that's going to analyze their information as they come in and time them and help you on open groups though would it because mine aren't open but i have a bot that invites them so they obviously right me. right right but if all of their groups happen to be open groups and if they're there for less than 30 seconds and they don't have payment info on file and they've never used payment info and all of those conditions are met it's reasonable to say i'm pretty safe hitting them with the ban hammer If they've all got the same tag and they're all thousands and thousands of days old and they're all doing the same dance, which is what they were doing in our place, then yeah, we just got rid of them. We actually contacted Sexy New Beach and he said, I'm ever so sorry, my bots have wandered. And then he came in to see them and said, they're not mine. So they obviously accept invites. Yeah, it's crazy. And the other limitation, of course, is the ban list on your estate 500 max, right? So my gizmo is going to incorporate a call out to my SQL server to be able to keep track of them beyond that 500 max exactly of the land permit. Yeah, one in, one out. We've done that yep. that way for years. Yeah, but there is a Jira for um, for for timed estate bans. You know, it's just all or nothing at the moment. There is actually a Jira that's been accepted for that. So that's something that will be worked on. Oh, Claire, please send me that list. And Vix, thank you so much for the information. I'm definitely going to follow up on that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other questions, y'all?
we could probably wrap up the uh, SL 18B celebration with a quick note about the last names that we recently um, put out. To commemorate Father's Day, uh, we released a few names along with the fantasy theme of SL 18B. Uh, but Father's Day, we offered, uh, and I think it's still going up yep, until the 25th, um, the last names that you can pick up right now Daddy, Pop, and Sire. And for fantasy, we have uh, Faye, Firework, Moat, Mystic, Padfoot, Sylvius, and Wood Sprite. I'll go ahead and put them all right here. Yeah, the Daddy and Pop ones seem to be very popular. Um, the, the SLB ones will also be available much later than the others, but they'll be up till 9th July, I think I you think said that. that. Yeah. When? So. Uh, 9th July for the, the SLB ones and 25th of June for go. Father's Day. I'm sure there are a whole bunch of very interesting names left. It's one of the beauties of Second Life, I think. And if you think there's a name that we should add, um, there's actually a form for that. Um, I just posted the uh, Earl in chat um, that you can use that to suggest last names. They do have a fairly sizable backlog of names right now, so maybe a while before you see any of the suggestions, if you do. But um, by all means, suggest last names. Is that going to be your new name, Torque? Safe. Can be the first name. We can probably provide, uh, we can do the updates on a few of our um, bugs that we are still working and monitoring on. And the first one would be a DT. So we're still having the issues with copying and resyncing accounts to a DT since our uh, completion of the migration, uh, as well as issues with login failures. Um, we're still working on it. Um, it's still being discussed, um, and it's still open. Um, so go ahead and follow the blog. Um, we're trying to provide as uh, you know timely updates when we can. Um, but yeah, it's still a thing, and um, yep, still open. Hopefully, we get this resolved. I know we've mentioned it probably the last four meets. Yeah, at least I know I talked with uh, <laughs> talked with folks on it today, and yeah, it's it's being actively worked on. But you know that being actively worked on and being completed are two different things. So hopefully that'll be done done soon, though, sooner rather than later at this point. Yeah, exactly, Eric. You have to have the trademark at the end of that. I do not, Sophie. I'm sorry. Um, maybe at the uh, the other user group that might be useful. And group chat is another one. Um, we're still actively collecting information. We escalate it up with everything we have. Um, so if you are experiencing an issue with your group chat, definitely reach out to us. Let us know the name of the group. Um, 
any specifics as what's happening inside the group, uh, you know, chat's failing, um, maybe roles are no longer functioning properly, any specifics you can relay regarding what the issue is. And um, we'll collect all that and we'll send it up. And Torque, um, well, we don't actually have a, a prepay option like that, but uh, one thing you could consider doing is um, when you uh, process credit, or excuse me, process credit, when you uh, sell on the Lindex, so Linda dollars on the Lindex, um, keep the amount that you want for that payment um, in your account balance, and it will automatically come out of that. The account balance will be exhausted first before the payment method is used. Not that I'm aware of, Tork. Yeah, same. I don't know. It's still um, creating a U.S. balance, which seems to be pretty effective and has been in use for quite some time. So um, if you're in a position that you collect a lot of Lindens, I mean, you still need to, you know, make uh, financial commitments as far as, like, you know, region renewals. Um, it's a really easy and pretty seamless um, way to kind of just, you know, store a balance on there that gets used first, and um, you don't have to worry about withdrawing and then having money on the payment method. You can um, just keep it right there. Sell the Lindens, create the balance, and you can view that your uh, transaction balance uh, through your dashboard. I'll go ahead and uh, fish that link out here. Well, it's just a matter of selling the Lindens, and they just stay right there. Um, for those who regularly sell Lindens to withdraw, it's basically just cutting the, that process in half, just doing the first part. So you just go in, you sell your Lindens, and you're done. That's really it. You know, just specify how many Lindens you want to sell, and um, it'll just stick right there on your your credit as a credit balance. So here's the link, basically the top view of how your account would look. So of the four sections, the middle two are the ones I'm referring to. How many, how much Lindens do you have or how many Lindens you have in your balance? And uh, what's your U.S. credit balance? So it's going to say U.S. dollar balance. It'll say Tilia account summary, um, but it's your U.S. dollar balance on your Second Life account. Yuri, that's a good question. Um, looking at the teams that might be able to answer that, if they're able to, it would probably be um, our open development because, once again, it might be a tool. Um, we really don't have, like, a billing forum. Anything, like, personal related would be a support ticket or contacting us directly. But as far as, like, introducing new technology or tools, um, I would probably go with our open development team. I'll go ahead and post them here. It, 
it's a bi-weekly meeting, and um, it's an open discussion of Second Life development. So that would be a great place to say, hey, what about this kind of um, method or you know, what about this kind of technology or this tool? No worries, Susie. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good to see you, Susie. Tim, you're stungent. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I think that, uh, Yuri, I would uh, – I definitely uh, second what Vic said, and I know that uh, some of that's been talked about in the past, and maybe it'd be a good discussion to have now. So I would recommend talking with them about it. Mark was a long time ago. Gosh, when I think about it, I think that he was there for um, SL8B. So that would be about 10 years. Yes, I think when I said that, I think I felt about three more gray hairs pop out. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Got about uh, 15 minutes left um, or so. Uh, any other questions or, or thoughts, feelings, etc.? And yes, Eric, that was actually uh, the new continent when I came into. So we're probably around the same SL age as far as where we're from, even though this account is only a couple years old. Were you connecting with a tin can and a string, Torek, back in those days? You know, there's a guy on YouTube who connects his internet through a piece of wet string to show that you still can. And do you know he actually connects? That's pretty amazing, actually. Now I use an acoustic coupler. I know, Susie, we'd had uh, rolling restarts this morning, and we actually had uh, a second round of rolling restarts, so it took a little longer than usual. Do we know what went wrong with the, uh, the first one? I don't think they've released anything on that yet, but uh, I expect they will if they can, I mean, as it comes up. Um, you know, I don't have any information yet, though. It was a surprise. It seemed to be running okay. I suspect it was hamster number 15. They're always a problem. Well, you know, if you'd feed them more consistently, Wendy, that wouldn't be an issue. It wasn't my fault, mostly. Oh, was it key? See, you knew more than me.
I would suspect so, Yuri. I know that uh, oh, way back in Linden World there was actually reactive water. That would that would be cool to see that again. Um, but uh, not sure what will be happening with that. I know that there's lots of talk about the uh, engine. Someone actually made a script some time back that if you put a prim over the water, it would actually generate caustics effects when somebody went through it. Make it look like it was splashing. I even saw my bear as part of someone's uh, SL18B display, so. <laughs> it's kind of cool, though, Wendy. It really is. Any other questions about anything we touched on so far? Sure thing, Zara. Well, a special bear, I don't know about this one. Do tell. Just that I have uh, special bears that I give out during the holidays of different holidays, uh, and I, of course, have the love bear for for special situations. But other than that, uh, nothing besides that. But like, if you hit me up for a bear during Christmas time or during Easter time or during Halloween uh, and stuff like that, I'll I might give you that bear instead of my regular bear. No big deal. Panther, do you mean uh, land themes for for um, Linden homes or for something else? 
Uh, I know that Patch mentioned yesterday there's three, probably four uh, more that are in the pipeline right now. I don't know beyond that. And I don't know any themes, unfortunately. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. We've pulled Cupid out a couple of times on Valentine's Day and had had uh, the avatar at the uh, Isle of View. Um, there's a couple of others like Trick or Treat Land and um, so forth, but uh, we haven't had them out for a while. Maybe we should. Yeah, that was Trick or Treat Linden. Me, I always remember Pony Linden. That'll take you back a bit. Oh my god. Yori, should I mention video lending as well? Leth, yeah, most likely. Um, that would be something for governance. Um, they actually have their own user group on that um, where they address specific governance issues. But um, yeah, I would, at the very least, I would consider uh, filing abuse reports on that. Definitely, and, uh, and then they'll let us know if we need to come out and clean it up. See, why are they sending us? That's not, you know, it's governance. Yeah, the toss determination is governance, and when they make the determination, they let us know, hey, somebody's abusing things here, and then Land will come out and uh, make arrangements. Although, Wraith, if they uh, did say to ask you, did they do that in a ticket or in voice in a meeting or what? Okay, do me a favor, submit a support ticket saying uh, that so I can go ahead and send it up to my manager so I don't want you getting bounced back and forth between the two teams and nothing getting done because that's just 
crazy to have you have to go through. So submit the ticket, put it reference my name, uh, Izzy Linden, so that way I can go ahead and get it escalated and get you a decision. Thanks, Izzy. Absolutely. And uh, 16 meter parcels used for advertising purposes does break the micro parcel uh, uh, rule that's out there. So, I mean, you can always point people to that, too. I was just going to post that in there, so thank you. Looks like it's just about that time. Any final... Nope. But all the cool Lindens are already here, Eric. Uh, Grumpity knows that I think she's great, so no worries. You guys have an amazing day. It was great talking to you again. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Yes, take care, all. Our next meeting will be July 21st. Thank you for having us. See you next time. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Take care. Go down the pub now. Right back, to, back, back to writing code. <laughs>